Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I got another really fascinating question from one of my email subscribers uh, that I want to share with you here. So Michael Mikkel, Michael, <laughs> sorry about that, says, hi, Jesko. Perhaps one day you can answer a potentially stupid question that I've always wondered about. I've actually wondered about this myself quite a bit. Let's say you build a cabin in a big yard made with light materials like straw bales, covered from the outside with light wood or something like that, and from the inside with 50 centimeters of porous material. What would happen with sound in a place like that? Will there be room modes, standing waves? Could that work for a poor man's semi-anechoic chamber? I've been curious about this for years. Thanks, Michael, Mikhail, Michael. Now, I'm pr pretty sure that it's highly unlikely that you're going to be building a studio from straw bales anytime soon. But I've actually wondered about this question, this idea, for some time myself. And there's something really interesting that we can learn about our home studio's low end, actually, by thinking about this. So let's have a look at what a studio made from straw bales might look like, and also what that actually tells us about the low end. But before I do that, if you actually need help fixing the low end in your studio, maybe you've set up your desk, your speakers in your room and you've realized that your low end is somehow lacking punch, clarity, sub pressure, push, if you will. And if you're mixing, you're constantly misjudging what is actually going on in the music. And then it's highly likely that you're actually not set up in the right location in your room. And in order for you to fix that problem, I've developed a technique I call the Bass Hunter Technique, which is a simple listening test that walks you through identifying the low end pattern in your room to figure out where the low end sweet spot in your room actually is, because that's the position, the place where you need to set up your listening position and around which you then build your setup, place your desk and set up your speakers. In order for you to do that, I've developed my free Phantom Speaker Test Workshop, which you can sign up to at the link in the description. This is my process to set up your desk and speakers correctly, no matter what room you're in. And again, the first step in this two-step process is identifying the low end sweet spot in your room. So if you're having trouble with that, if you're having trouble with the low end in your studio, I want you to check out my Phantom Speaker Test Workshop at the link in the description. But let's get back to the question of what a studio made from straw bales might actually look like. So I had a quick search around and I found a few interesting examples that I want to share with you. So this first one here is the Straw Bale Studio somewhere in the UK. This is some kind of a round structure. And if we look down here, obviously it's completely built from straw bales and then it's covered in, I believe, some sort of plaster here, lime plaster around the outside. So it's not purely just made from straw bales, but look at this space. Doesn't it look fantastic? Unfortunately, it doesn't say much about what this actually sounds like in on this page here. I'll have a link to all these examples in the resource section under the video, by the way. But this is a first example, so somebody's definitely done this. Here's another one. This is a theater space in Estonia. This is a project from 2011. And if we just scroll down, this is kind of what it looks like. They've colored these black somehow. I'm not sure if it's painted or not. But if we scroll even further down, we can see here that this is completely built from straw bales. And there's no other structure apart from that around it, as far as I can tell. But interesting space, wouldn't you say, as a theater? And that definitely looks like fun. So um, here's another one. This is on this music tech website. Liam O'Mullen Mulani. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Sorry about that. So he went on this venture of building a studio from straw bales. So here's what that looks like. And then it's covered in this sheet metal, I guess, on the outside. Again, unfortunately, there's not much of a description of what this actually sounds like, but another example of what of this being done. And then my possibly favorite example is this structure here. So this is, again, kind of a concert 
hall, <laughs> I guess. Um, I love the way this looks, right? And how it's lit. And here are a bunch of other kind of impressions of what that looks like on the inside. So again, this is purely made from straw bales. Great little place, I guess. It must be quite fun to uh, listen to a concert in a space like this. But so what do we actually know about the acoustic properties of straw? And I couldn't find too much about it, but there is an interesting research paper here from a few folks at the University of Perugia, I guess. Is that what it's pronounced in Italy? Italians love their acoustics. Very, very good acousticians from Italy. And so they went through a bunch of research on uh, uh, straw as an acoustic material, as this paper suggests. And I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but again, I'll link this down below. Basically, what they found through some experimentation is that it, well, it, it doesn't work all that well either for isolation or for absorption. So because it's... It's basically it lacks mass. It's not that great at isolating sound. And although it does absorb sound relatively well, it's definitely not as good as a proper porous material that we would use in a studio. Right? So if we think about this for a purpose, for the purpose of building a studio, the main issue here is that it lacks mass. So obviously, like in the original question, you could improve that by adding a layer of some solid structure to the outside for the purpose of isolation, increasing that isolation, and then also adding porous absorption on the inside to increase or improve the absorption characteristics on the inside. But then again, that kind of defeats the purpose, right? I mean, you're building a huge structure. Why not just use standard porous absorption material in the, the kind of the way it's meant to be used for framing a proper room in the first place, right? And then obviously when we think about this as a anechoic chamber, I guess that could work, right? The Again, the main issue is that, or the main characteristic of this material is that it, it basically lacks mass, so it lets all the low end pass through. So if you build a structure from this, you're basically letting all the low end escape and the mids and highs would get absorbed to some extent. Yeah, You obviously, if you build this outside, you'd need a roof over it and that would introduce reflections again, kind of defeating the purpose of, uh, of, of trying to make this an anechoic space. So kind of riffing on this idea, you might also just place your speakers in a field <laughs> and just be done with it? I don't know. Uh, again, I'm just riffing on this idea here. I'm definitely not going to try this anytime soon, but it's a fun little thought experiment. Here's where it gets interesting, though. Again, this the property of this material that is very similar to something that we use in the home studio is the fact that it lets low-end energy pass through. And this is quite similar to your standard drywall. So obviously drywall doesn't absorb mids and highs, but because it's relatively thin, it's not particularly heavy, there's not that much mass, it actually lets low end pass through. And so in any kind of space, home studio, that is actually built from mainly drywall, you'll get a similar effect where the low end energy escapes while the mids and highs get reflected. And that obviously means that the buildup of standing waves, aka room modes, in such a space is reduced. Because that energy escapes, it doesn't get reflected back. The resonance that happens between walls can't build up as strongly. And that gives us kind of a, a win-some, lose-some situation, right? From a isolation perspective, we lose some and all that energy escapes and everybody in the building around you will most definitely hear your low end. But the fact that standing waves can't build up as strongly does or can to some extent work in your favor. Mainly because in such a small room, the only way to get a properly balanced low end is to place your listening position in the low end sweet spot. 
Again, quick plug for my Phantom Speaker Test Workshop. It's, a, that's, it's all about finding that low-end sweet spot and setting up your speakers, your desk around that spot. Of course, if those standing waves never build up in the first place, that means we actually get some flexibility in terms of where we can place our listening position because the low-end sweet spot isn't as clearly defined. And in a small room, that is a massive win in terms of flexibility because it doesn't narrow down our options quite so much in terms of where we want to place our setup. That's just kind of the benefit of working in a room with leaky bass. It just gives us more flexibility in terms of how we use that space. And this is what I want you to keep in mind. If you are working in a home studio where most of the walls, or at least some of the walls, are actually made from drywall, then this is a circumstance that you will be in. So isolation is poor, but what you lose in isolation, you actually win in terms of flexibility of using that space. In itself, this isn't good or bad, but this is just something to be aware of when you're setting up your home studio. All right, I hope that gives you a little insight into what happens in terms of the low end in your studio. I think it's a, a great little fun exercise to think about this in terms of using straw bales, also just what these studios actually might look like. But with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.